what is up? Are you ready for that snowstorm in spring? Wow, crazy. Kind of reminds me of 1996. Remember the home opener, the Yankees, snow, little flurries here and there. But I remember that year. <laughs> snow, it was snowing till April or late April or something like that. Yes, folks, I was born in 1985. I do remember that. A little applause for the 80s babies out there. So, Yankees fans, the New York Yankees, as reported on this channel and on MLYNews.com, were going to pass up on Cobb. But then again, platforms like NewJersey.com, NJ.com, talked about the Yankees being re-interested in Cobb. But if you ask me, I think that was done on purpose to increase Cobb's value. And now we saw that the Orioles signed them for four years. If you go back a week in my previous video, you will see where I state it wouldn't make sense for the Orioles to obtain Cobb for one year. If they are going after Cobb, it will be a multi-year deal. So there you go, Orioles fans. Even though I think your organization is horribly ran, I think the owner is out of touch. I think he should sell it soon. I think uh, Dan Duquette should do his job, even though I think your organization is poorly ran. I do like your uh, ballpark. There you go. I told you guys you were going after Alex Cobb, and there you go. You got him. <laughs> for the people that have been around for a while, you remember back in the day, somebody makes a prediction, and then somebody would say, hey, you just got that from uh, ESPN Insider, uh, Buster Only, <laughs> where you had to pay monthly for that insider knowledge. I, do they still have that? I don't know. But yeah, if people are wondering why my handle is named NYY Insider, it's because I used to own a domain with NYY News and others. NYY Insider was basically the same thing as uh, ESPN Insider. So that one went way back as well. And the handle NYY News was taken, so I use NYY Insider. Oh, be quiet, Felix. You're not an insider. You're a wannabe. Look at your screen handle, NYY Insider. You're her joke. <laughs> wow. Reading goes a long way. It's in my bio, but if people didn't know that before, there you go. So, Yankees fans, I want to talk about, there's a lot of Yankees fans now duplicating what NYYNews.com is doing. I encourage that. First and foremost, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I am a baseball fan only. I'm not into other sports. I was raised watching baseball. I played baseball, and I like baseball. So if people are duplicating what NYYNews.com is doing, you know, starting their own platforms, news, etc., then, hey, do it. It helps Major League Baseball as a whole. Even though I didn't like how MOB went after Judge, they made a stupid-ass show for no apparent reason going after him, and I thought it was ridiculous. Even though they do stuff like that, I still want to promote Major League Baseball and watch it succeed. Because of you, Yankees fans, the enthusiasm, the excitement is there. Yes Network is seeing record numbers and ratings, shattering them for spring training. It's going to be the same for other bigger platforms come the regular season, ESPN, Fox, etc. I mean, like I keep saying, MLB is on to come up again. If you ask me, NFL was ridiculous the way they handled that anthem process. It turned a lot of people off on the NFL. So now you're seeing the repercussions for another league, and you're seeing MLB take those fans that have been turned off by the NFL. I don't see the NBA outgrowing MLB for a simple fact that the NBA makes a lot of stupid decisions when it comes to, let's say, stacking teams for small market cities. The NBA has always done this for some apparent reason. They have always shunned their big market teams like the Knicks. The Knicks, for some apparent reason, have not had the same luck as, let's say, other small market teams in the NBA like the Thunder, like the Warriors, etc. Just compare the Oakland Athletics. People could say they're a small market team. They barely have seats filled 
So the Warriors are basically the equivalent of the Athletics. So compare the Knicks fan base, New York City, to Oakland, let's say. I'm not saying this is a small city, but this is what I'm talking about. This is why the NBA is never going to outgrow Major League Baseball, because they rather promote small market teams with, let's say, less population in their cities rather than to build up the Knicks. And trust me, if the NBA wanted to make the New York Knicks one of the premier franchises in the NBA, they would do it. Not like they're not, but <laughs> the Knicks have a worse track record than the New York Mets. Sure, the Knicks had excellent teams in the 90s and early 2000s, but that franchise is a joke. But then a person like me sitting on the sidelines when it comes to the NBA, literally, I'm not going to lie, I was an NBA fan with the when the New York Knicks were actually good. But this is what I'm talking about. Their business model makes no sense. But luckily for us baseball fans, the MLB has finally got it right again. So, Yankees fans, back to creating your own platforms. I created NYY News when I was 20 in 2005. I was bored that the Yankees didn't make it deep into the playoffs. I believe that was the year the Chicago White Sox won the World Series. I said, hey, let me just start my own platform. I was ready, already knowledgeable in website development, design, CEO, etc. That's what I do. And I created it. But here's a few tips, pointers, for whoever wants to start their own platform. It wasn't like before, the early days. Now people, let's say, are more connected to the internet with the smartphones, etc. If you want to start your own platform, folks, you're going to have to go in with, let's say, armor, okay, and be ready for war. There, from my experience, there's a lot of mentally ill people online, and you're going to run into them. Sure, you can hit the block button, but nowadays people are knowledgeable with, let's say, gaming. There's something in gaming where, let's say, if you have a Twitch account, you're streaming yourself playing games. There's people out there that have made this popular, uh, doxing, etc. Just targeting people and trying to, let's say, scare them by putting out their address or something or IP. This is what you're going to experience if you create, let's say, your own platform. There's going to be people out there that just target you because they want to clout ride you. They want to target you to the point where you reply back to them. And it's funny because just recently, last summer, me and Pete of the Seminetti Source were talking about this this is when Pete was retired he wasn't doing his Yankee stuff anymore but he says Felix why do you have so many trolls just ignore them because I run multiple platforms on the web and I said yo there's no way to control it they're gonna make fake profiles of you they're gonna make fake links of you they're gonna make the most ridiculous stuff about you ever and then if you reply to them, they're going to take your replies and, let's say, remix it with a different title, just trying to make you look bad. And then the funny thing is, Pete didn't understand that. But when the Salmonetti source, and when I told him, hey, hop on to the Yankees news thing again, you can make it. He saw firsthand what I was talking about. He started to see... A whole bunch of people create fake links of him, try to harass him, try to locate him, etc. And then he goes, yo, Felix, you were right. I mean, between me and you, if this was in person, I would have been in jail by, by now because I would have knocked somebody out. You're right. There's a lot of insane people on the web. So this is what even people like, let's say, Aaron Boone the manager of the Yankees experiences online as well, like famous people. They even experience that on a higher level. But let's say if you're a lower level and have a, a couple of thousand followers here and there, 
it's going to be hard to, let's say, combat that. So this is what I'm talking about, folks. Sure, what we're doing is innocent. But like I said, there's a lot of people that chase clout. They will latch on to your name, try to seek your attention. Even if you block them, they will find ways to just constantly try to harass you. So as a friend, personally, Yankees fans stick together. That's just my tips. Like if you want to start your own platform and if it becomes successful, be ready for that. There's a lot of people that create platforms and don't know how to handle that. It just takes them by storm. Suddenly you have somebody posting your address online. Let's say you click a link, you click it, they post your IP somewhere on a comment or something. I mean, you're going to have to be ready to deal with that kind of stuff. So that's just my tip for you guys. If you want to start your own platform, in my opinion, just ignore it. Don't reply back because if you do, they'll just take your replies and, like I said, try to remix it and try to, let's say, troll you in a way where they think they're incriminating you because you reply to them. So in, in my opinion, just ignore them. Just take the high road. Even if you have like a pride in yourself and let's say if this was in real life, you'll probably end up in jail because you're pro you'll probably knock somebody's teeth out. Just take the high road, man. But that's just a platform in general, folks. I'm not talking about Yankee stuff. Sure, I've seen stuff here and there. But if you do other stuff like politics or something like that, you're going to get the most insane people ever latch on to you. So that's just, that's just my tips, folks. If you want to create a platform, be ready for that stuff. Let's say a Yes broadcaster does the same thing as me, uh, New York Yankees News. He's going to be backed up, though, by a multi-million dollar company. See, a person like me and you are not. So I'm just saying that just makes it harder to combat, let's say, a psychopath. Because let's be realistic. If a psychopath cyber harasses and stalks uh, Jack Curry, he could just pick up his phone and say, hey, I got the money for a lawyer. I'm going to look into this psychopath. And bam, he dealt with them. But it just makes it harder for, let's say, low-level guys like myself and other people online that run their own platforms to do stuff like that. It, I mean, it just takes time and effort. So in my opinion, again, like I said, just take the high road and just ignore them. But folks, here's another tip. Again, like I said, th this is just tips for people that want to start their own platform. Make sure you always document what other people do to you online. You never know when it's going to come in handy. Use websites like archive.is. Use websites like the Wayback Machine. Even though you think it's nothing, make sure you keep a record of everything. You never know. People online, like I said, I'm not saying the majority of people, but you're going to have a lot of Looney Tunes try to target you. So, folks, that's just my pointers for you guys. People are probably say, wow, I don't want to start my own. Yankees new site now nah, nah do it do it man I'm just saying like there's instances that you will find people like that I'm not saying every day maybe a couple of months here and there but I'm just saying just a heads up as for the Yankees skipping out on comp what I originally started off with it looks like the Yankees are going to settle for the trade deadline and go after a archer or former who knows who becomes available at that point Hey, let's see if the Astros can duplicate their success. Let's say just magically that they're horrible and not in contention for the playoffs. You could see a person like uh, Dallas Keiko become available in other pitchers. I'm just saying hypothetically. I'm not saying the Astros are going to not make the playoffs. But you never know what pitcher is going to become available come the trade deadline. So, Yankees fans, I'm going to make these rants like this a podcast so people can know before they click it. So it's going to say podcast because I was talking about a lot of non-baseball stuff. So uh, I was watching a commercial that the, I think the Yankees shot and it was the most, it was hilarious because uh, coming from a Latino family like myself, when uh, you get these guys to talk English, it's freaking hilarious. It's uh high heat or something like that it's not in front of me i'm going to play after this but um it was hilarious so no copyright intended not like i'm making money off this channel anyways let's laugh together 
to this video that the New York Yankees shot of their relievers. Hello, I'm Dylan, and he's a Rodas, and we are your Relief Heating Company. Are you having issues with your heating system? Well, you're in luck because we bring the heat. Are you having problems maintaining optimal room temperatures? We bring the heat. We bring the heat. Is your boiler or furnace inadequate? We bring the heat. We bring the heat. Oh. Are you having difficulties with your air conditioning? Too bad because we only bring the heat. We bring the heat. So for all of your heating needs, call us, your Relief Heating Company. At 1-800-WE-BRING-THE-HEAT. And remember, we, we bring, bring the, the heat. heat. We bring the heat! Oh, there you have it, folks. Talking about the 80s. Wow, that was a throwback to the 80s, man. <laughs> a little uh, WWF uh, Macho Man Randy Savage voice going on there. And wow, doesn't uh, Kaneling look like a... Uh, a friend or whatever that just um gets drunk with you over the weekends and stuff like that. He looks like a pretty down to earth guy. He was uh one of the main Yankees uh, cheering on the Eagles. So Yankees fans, let's get ready for that spring storm. I was gonna say winter storm over here in the Northeast, the tri-state area. Really, if I didn't have so many hangovers, I would say that we haven't had a spring snowstorm like this in quite a while i don't know i don't remember man but yeah man putting on my tinfoil hat on superstitions it might be a great sign just like i said take a time machine back to 1996 opening day snowing in april so let's hope it continues to snow in april i don't know about y'all but i'm going to take my ass to somewhere that's warm <laughs> to the caribbean I'm not a fan of staying in the cold for, let's say, longer than three months. So, folks, there you have it. This has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. I will check you out next time.